I need to, while you're here, ask you for yes. your comment on something quickly. Yes, your yes. good friend and colleague, Louis yes. C.K., yes. has been accused of and has admitted to yeah. some lewd acts involving women. What was the impact on you when you heard not only the, the accusations, but his admission? Um, stunned, I think. You know, um, you give your friends a benefit of the doubt. I tried to think of it in terms of, you know, I've had friends who have compulsions and who have done things gambling or drinking or drugs, and we've lost some of them. Some of them have died, and you always find yourself back to a moment of, did I miss something? C could I have done more? Are, are the thing. And in this situation, I think we all could have. And um, so you feel anger at what he did to people. Look, comedy on its best day is not a great environment for women. I think it's gotten better over the years, but certainly when, when we started 30 years ago, it was really difficult. And so to do it was an act of bravery in and of itself. The idea that there was this added layer of uh, pressure and manipulation and fear and humiliation that, that and not to, I'm, you know, look, I, I don't want to make this like, Louis was the only one in the business. Yeah. Like, it's not. It's endemic. And I imagine you walked through 30 Rock, and I, I think it's a question of we're used to being in charge. And I think if, if you talk to women, they're in a very difficult position, and you get mad at yourself, too, for for laughing it off or for thinking that didn't happen, and it's it's hard. That was my question because I mean, yeah. some women in the in the industry have said, "Oh, this is an open secret." Right. But in this case, you said you were stunned. I was stunned. You yeah. hadn't heard that. No, uh, I heard. So a year ago, I was doing a a podcast with yeah. David Axelrod, and a man in the audience asked me about it. Um, but in the context of that, and I hadn't heard yeah. at that point of any of it. So I was, you know, he said, what do you think about this allegations against Louis C.K.? And my first response was, what? And yeah. then joke, joke, and as he kept going, I was like, look, I know this is very serious, but I know Louis. Uh, he's always been a gentleman, you know, uh, to me, which, again, it speaks to the blindness that I think a man has, which is like, hey, he's a good guy. What are you talking about? Um, digging around in it and finding that, some people had done it was hard but we were all assured like no but we took somebody's word for it and maybe that's that's an error on our part you know with drugs we've tried interventions and maybe that's something that I, I just don't I, you know you talk to Louis CK no I haven't yeah. you know what I mean everything that's going on you know I heard like those fucking People were going down to the comedy cellar and then writing down what other comics were saying about Louis C.K. and all of that type of stuff. Was just it's just so fucking. It's such a crazy time right now, um, and uh, you know, I don't know. I love Louis C.K. and that was really obviously just a fucking hard thing to see happen to somebody. And he was definitely 100 percent wrong. I'll just say this: he was 100 percent wrong. He did own up to it. And I think he will definitely be back. Um, I will say that. And I also knew a couple of the women that he did this shit to. And I, I just feel bad for everybody. It's just fucking terrible. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what else you, you say about it. I feel like I'm in a divorce where you know both the mom and the dad. And you just you got to, like, pick a fucking side here. Uh you know, I don't know. All, all I think that just this new thing, though, is like like the level of witch hunt that happened when the Louis thing came out, like the amount of fucking people that they went after was just fucking, it was like six degrees of Louis's dick, you know, to the point that even the, the fucking Huffington Post was even trying to like, you know, list people, the clients of the same manager that he had and stuff, who, by the way, is one of the great people I've ever met in life. Yeah, this kind of seems like it's become... Um, it doesn't make a difference if it's sexual misconduct all the way to sexual assault slash rape. You know, you're getting the exact same, uh, like, level of punishment. Um, so that's only my question, okay, out of all of this, because he was definitely wrong, obviously. I mean, I mean, this is all obvious shit that I'm saying, but... Uh, 
does the punishment match the crime? Because, you know, sexual misconduct, when you talk of sexual misconduct, like, I, I, don't, I, would, I don't know how many podcasts I would have to do to tell you all the stories of sexual misconduct with just women as a stand-up comedian who used to go out after his shows selling his posters and all and taking pictures with you, just the fucking women, okay? And I'll tell you, it was never any of the young ones. It was always these middle-aged fucking women, couple glasses of red wine. Oh, God, and they come at you with their va-va-va-boom energy, and you'd be like, oh, no, here we go. It does change. I mean, I hate to say it, Louis C.K. gave me great advice once oh my God. when he came to having a kid, which is very odd. But he said, uh, let it change you. And I don't know Louis very well. I should say this, too, because people... Yeah. Somebody, somebody's giving me a hard time about not commenting on it. Now, my, my thought was like, first of all, I want to gather my thoughts. Absolutely. And second of all, I don't know him that well. No. I don't even have his phone number. I've never had a phone call conversations with him. I've had a, we've exchanged emails maybe three times ever, and he and I have run into each other at clubs and yeah. said hi. We've never gone out and hung out together. I'm not good friends with him. Yeah. So when all this was going down, it's not like I had information. All right, uh, this is not to throw Louis C.K. under the bus, but someone was saying, like, what's the big deal of someone masturbating in front of you? Oof. I, this, is what I, this is what I said. <laughs> They've never had it happen. You're a man. Yep. Okay, and if a woman was masturbating in front of me, I would not be worried. You're not threatened for your safety. I would Exactly. Yep. I'd be like, okay, I, well, you want to do that? All right. I, but if a man is doing it and they're blocking the door, mm-hmm. and it's a man that fit, Look, I was in the, the green room, not the green room, the... Um, uh, the bar area, the comedy store. Mm-hmm. You know that little narrow pathway? And this guy walked by, it was about three months ago, and he was six foot seven, 300 plus pounds. Mm-hmm. And he, when he walked by me, I just looked at him, he looked at me, I got physically nervous. Yeah. Physically nervous. Sure. Like I was thinking, okay, if this guy decided he was going to kill me, he mm-hmm. was going to smash me, there's almost nothing I could do about it. He's so much bigger than me. That is how almost every woman feels around a large man. So it's so insane. You know, they're like, he jerked off in front of them. And at the time, you know, this is a very valid thing. They're like, at the time, I didn't know what was happening. Because your brain isn't designed to handle, like, a famous comedian's masturbating in front of me. I'll file this away. Well, not only that, how about it comes out of the blue? Mm-hmm. How about, how about you You're and I You're trying to process out? it. You and I are friends. We've been friends for a long time. If we were in some hotel room somewhere and I said, can I jerk off in front of you? You'd be like, what? Yeah. You probably would. This is not like a rational request. Like, hey, do you want to get some food? Hey, right. you know, let's let's go to the bar. Hey, there's no neurological right. path to this where it's like, there's yeah, like, we'll go to the food bar and get food. You just open a door uh-huh. and dropped off a cliff. There was a report in The New York Times. Obviously, you know about that. And then a day later, Louis cop to it and cop to it late but he did it and he's my friend and it's a difficult position to be in because i certainly can't condone anything he did there was no way to justify it or there's no way to defend it there's no way to apologize for him about it there's no way to to let him off the hook but there's a lot of concern about you know who knew what when how did you guys let this happen everybody knew this everybody knew that everybody was in on it it's not true sadly i i, I knew What most people knew, there was a story out there, I guess going back several years, that there were unnamed people in the story. It took place in a hotel room in Aspen. It was always out there, but then it would pick up momentum at different times. And I would ask him about it. I I would say this this story about you forcing, you know, these women to, to watch you jerk off. What is what is that? Is that is that true? He goes, no, it's it's not true. It's not real. It's a rumor. And I would say, well, are you going to address it somehow do you, do you to handle it, to get out from under it whenever it shows up? He goes, no, I can't. I can't do that. It, it, it'll give it life. It'll give it air. And that, that was the conversation. The other incidents, how would everybody know about that? The real problem is, is that female comics have been hearing about this stuff for a while. And there was, there was no place where they could go with that information. And I know some of them. And she, I, I know Rebecca Corey, and she couldn't tell me about this. There was no place for them to go with these stories where they felt safe to tell them. And it's, it's fucking sad. So when it comes to you know, believing women, 
I want to believe women, but in this particular instance, there was no one named in that story. There was no place for women to go tell this story. There was no women attached to it. I didn't know their names until Friday. So I believed my friend. It's just that the the environment enabled the dismissiveness of it. How do, how do I put this? The, the work environment, the social environment makes it difficult for people to come forward and, and be heard, to be listened to, to be believed, and for action to be taken around that. It is pushed aside. It is dismissed. It is framed as an annoyance or an embarrassment. It is used against people. It is used as a threat. That is the structure that exists in life. Like my friend, my friend Sovereign said to me, she said, what it comes down to is that no one should be asked if they want to see your dick when they walk into work. That just thinking about it like that should open up an entire window of empathy to what a lot of women have to deal with every day walking into toxic male work environments. It's just it's just a bubbling undercurrent. If it's not overt, it, there, it's, it's an electrical undercurrent that has always run through society. So that's the way things are set up. And now when you talk about comedy, that world is a goddamn free-for-all. It's a Wild West show. Is it a boys club? Yeah, I, I guess it is. And in, and in terms of my own experience with that and looking back on it, when there are women comics, I'm like, I don't, I think women are funny and they've got to be able to fight it out. There was no safe space created for women. There was no special treatment given for women. And then it, it was just sort of like, if you can cut it, if you can make it, if you can rise up out of this garbage that is the comedy scene of what I came up in, then you deserve it. What you didn't take into consideration is all the fucking obstacles that they're up against aside from just that. Well, what we don't really, I think, know is just how much bullshit they have to deal with on top of just figuring out how to get on stage and do comedy. They have to deal with all of us all of the male bullshit that every woman has to deal with in every work environment. There just is no HR department in comedy. There's no place to go to have grievances. It's stacked against you. People, it's so funny with Louie, how people would come and say like, you know, oh man, he, uh, you must have known and blah, blah, blah. I heard the rumors years ago. We've talked about this on the air. I heard the rumors years ago about Mm -hmm. the two girls. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know any names, but you just heard it. But you it just was, heard that a thing had happened. A thing had with happened with two girls. He jerked off, and it was like it wasn't a menacing energy. It wasn't like a oh my god, he uh, did what? It was like yeah, it was weird. And then years later, I hear that what's her name, Jen Kirkman, and then she goes, no, it's not. But there was never a person going, hey, listen to me and believe me. Right. There was never that, and um, no, it was never enough to like. If Louis is your friend, right, it's one thing if you don't know Louis and you can just address the fact that, oh, yeah, I've heard some rumors before, and it's almost like you're giggling about it and it's because it's rumors and it's gossip. But if the dude is your friend and there is no name to attach to it, there's no date, there's no specific incident, it's just it's this thing that's in the ether, I don't know what there would be for you or I or somebody who knows Louis to talk about because up until this New York Times thing had come out – there was no actual evidence. And I'll tell you something. I've told you privately, but I have not said this publicly at all. There is something I lied about. And I put myself in a weird position by lying about it. Um, and it was that I said, like, we had never spoken about it. And, and the reason I lied about that was because I believe in the privacy of private conversations. Mm-hmm. When somebody says something to me privately, I never reveal it. I, I never, you know... And I'll, I won't give any specifics away or anything that was said to me. I will only say that in the last couple of years, I have asked if it was true, and I was told it was not true more than once. So I did ask. Wow. So when the news broke, I, you know, look, as a person, you always think, hey, man, there's something there. That, that doesn't sound like something somebody would make up. I'm not mad at them for not telling me. I understand sexual stuff. Either you're angry about it, you're ashamed about it, whatever. But... You know, like, what do you do beyond that? Like, somebody has told you, like, nah, it's just a rumor. And I knew the rumors I had heard. There was never a name on it, except for Jen Kirkman, who I don't know. Or I might have met, but don't know. And didn't Jen Kirkman then come back and say that it wasn't Yes. So, so, yeah, it could have been. But then when I read the New York Times article, I'm like, oh, okay. You could immediately tell they were true. So there wasn't any part of you that was mad because then Louis had put you in this weird spot of going, I don't think that's true because he told you it wasn't? No, because once I saw the... uh, when we talked about it that, that day, when, once I had seen them written out, I didn't doubt they were true, especially because it was emails. Right. Um, I just won't reveal anything he said to me. It was nothing earth-shattering, but I just, I don't, he's my, he's my friend, and 
you know, look, what he did was stupid and selfish, but I, I love the guy and I'm not going to break a confidence. But just, just so people don't think that I'm a fucking moron, of course I asked. Right. Over the, of course. Um, and not from this point of view. This was, I'll just say it was like at least twice in the last couple of years. Um, when you asked him if it was over the phone, was he masturbating? No, it was in person, and he was. Okay, um, but, I, but I, I egged him on. I was, you know, I was wearing nothing but Saran wrap. Right. right. No, but I. I, yeah, I you, uh, you said, Louis, I, like I know you've never done this before, but yeah. just you know, yeah. hypothetically, what would show me what it would look like? And you know, it's funny. I didn't want to reveal that he had said that because for him, he wasn't commenting. Like, and I'm right. like, that's a, 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 a denial is a comment. So I wasn't going to break what somebody had told me privately for any reason. I just can't do that. If you had said this before he releases his statement, his, I mean, I, you wouldn't call it an apology because he didn't say well, whatever. Yeah, it was an apology or whatever it was. Before yeah. he releases his statement, if you say that, then all of a sudden the story is, well, Louis is saying this didn't happen. And even though you're, no, I didn't say that. I said he told me it didn't happen because you're close to him. You now become part of the story. Yeah, when it's not. and I had no interest in doing that. And yeah. I also, again, then I'm betraying what someone has said to me in a private conversation. But like, okay, now he's admitted it. So anybody who's ever said, I don't know if it's true. It's like, and again, he's not doing that to put people in a bad. I'm, I'm not mad at him for that. Like he put me in a bad spot. No, he didn't. Right. Like, he just didn't want to. It's none of your business yeah, anyway. Whatever. What do you mean a bad spot? Yeah, right? it was just a question. I mean, uh, I didn't know the. It wasn't like I said, hey, look, I'm working with this person now, and she's, you know, I didn't have a, a name to it. So that's all I'll say about anything private he said to me, but he did deny it more than once. Can and, I say uh, this yeah. about masturbating? Please. I think there's a small percentage of people that would like other folks to watch them beat off. And then there's the rest of us <laughs> who desperately don't want anyone desperately to see us. Desperately don't want anyone to see us. But I don't feel like there's a group in between. Like, hey, what, Tim, what if a couple folks watched you beat off? I don't know. Were they already in the room? Yeah. No big or you look. do it sometimes. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, like and on I a mean, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Nice alone, it gets a little boring, you know. Sometimes you have a little it's, and like, hey, it's, 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 it's not all just window dressing. Sometimes it's like, hey, hand me the magazine, or you're sitting on the remote, right. or could you shut the light? Like I, I actually use these folks. <laughs> this be my seems first like, mate. at least from what I've heard, and, and you guys might know more, just being more sort of in in the comedian community. This is this was not a very well kept secret. I had heard some stories about him being like inappropriate but i didn't know what that i didn't know what it meant and i don't have any connection to him so i've never just, heard a, a louis ck story i've heard this from a couple of women. i'd heard a couple of things yeah, yeah. all right so well, everyone's going down well if good we're not man done. i hope i hope uh I'm like Kaepernick. I hope every quarterback gets injured this Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just more work for us. 